Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how VBA objects actually work in memory. And once you understand this, you'll be able to declare, create and pass around your object variables with ease. And incidentally, this is something that most VBA users don't understand. So let's get started by looking at basic variables. So in VBA, we create a variable like this. We do dim T O T A L, which is the name, and we say as, and then the type. So what's actually happening here is that we're creating a space in memory, which is like essentially a cell in memory, and we're going to place a value in this cell. And we do so by using a sign like this. So essentially what we use variables for is while our code is running, we want to store values in a temporary place. And that's the whole point of using variables. Now we do two things with variables. We place a value in the variable and we take a value out or read a value from it. So in this case, I've placed the value in total. Now I might want to read this to a message box, for example. And what I can do is just use message box and the variable. Now VBA is smart enough. Once we use total, it will go to that memory location and give us back the value. And we don't have to worry about memory where it's stored or anything like this. So you can see that the value we got here was 67. Now we can also write it out to a worksheet. We can write it out to a file if we wanted, and we can do many different things. But essentially with a variable, we're placing the value in and we're taking a value out. Now, if you've used basic back in say the 1980s, you may have seen the let keyword. So what let is used for is assignment. Now we don't use it anymore, but it's useful here because we're going to be looking at the set keyword. So let basically is the assignment. It's saying let total now have the value 67. And we can use this with other types of variables, such as a string variable. And in this case, we say let the name now equal bill. And this places the value bill in the name, which as I said, is a cell in memory. Now, if we're dealing with objects, so for example, an object will be something like a collection. So let's say call as new collection. And we'll do more about this a bit later. But imagine we say dim call as new collection. We then use the set call keyword to set the collection to something. Now, normally we wouldn't use new in this situation and we'll see why later, but we'd say set call equals new and then the set will assign the new collection to call. The key point here is that when we're dealing with basic variables, we use let, but when we're dealing with objects, we use set. So let's now have a look at objects and we're gonna use the collection in VBA for our example. So you may have created a collection like this. You use dim and you use new. And now we've got a collection variable. Well, what's actually happening is VBA creates a new collection somewhere in memory. And secondly, it creates the variable call. And then it places the address in memory in call. Now what happens is anytime we reference call, VBA seamlessly gives us access to the collection. So we don't need to worry about the fact that it's not stored here. But this does have some implications as we'll see a bit later. But the reason VBA does this is because if we want to pass around our collection, we don't want to create a copy of it. We just want to pass the address around. And by having the address in the variable, we can do this. So for example, if we wanted to do a print collect function like we have here, so we want to print out what's in our collection. So we do print collect and we pass it. Let's just say we have a collection of fruit. And imagine like we add apple here. And then just imagine that like we add another 10,000 items. Now, if we didn't have the, the pointer method that I've just shown you, if we just passed in the item, well then VBA would have to create a copy of the collection. And when it creates a copy of the collection, it has to create 10,000 items. So by having it as a variable, we can just pass the address. This means that it's much more efficient. Now, as you can see, you don't need to worry about this. You basically just pass this in to the sub 
and VBA takes care of the fact that it's a pointer. Now, in fact, it's hidden so well that probably most people don't even know that it is a pointer rather than a variable. So in VBA, you may see code like this. So the first one is saying dim fruit is new collection. And the second one is saying dim fruit is collection. And then we set it to new collection. So what's the difference between these lines of code? Well, what these lines of code are doing is actually the same, but set gives us more flexibility. So when we use dim fruit as collection here, what actually happens is VBA creates a new variable called fruit. And it's kind of saying in the future, this is going to be a collection. But at the moment, it's not, a, not anything. It's just kind of primed in the future to be a collection. Now, when we do set, it's doing two things. The new collection part creates a new collection somewhere in memory. And then VBA takes the address of that collection in memory and it puts it into our fruit variable. Now, the dim line does all these three things in one go, creates a new collection, creates a new fruit variable, and it takes the address from the collection and places it in the fruit variable. From this point of view, these lines are doing the same thing. But the difference is, is that if we use dim as new, this means that every time we run our code, exactly one collection will be created. Now, when we use set, we can use set anywhere in our code. So this means that we can put it in for loops, in if statements, and it gives us more flexibility. So it means we can create any number of collections in our code. So let's look at a practical example of using set and new. So this is a list of names and the country that they're from. And what we're going to do is we're going to store each name and country in a class module, and then we're going to add it to a collection. So let's have a look at the code for that. Now, if you look on the left, you can see we have a class module called CLS customer. And in this class, we have basically three variables, first name, last name, and country. So we want to fill these every time that we read a customer record. So how we do this code is as follows. The first thing that we do is we create a collection. And this is a new collection because we're always going to have one collection. No matter how many customers there is for this particular application, there's just going to be one collection. So we don't need a set statement. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to get the range. So we declare a range variable and we simply say a set range equal sheet data and then range. And we say a one. And what we're going to get back is the current region. So the current region is all the adjacent cells. So once we have the range, it's very easy for us to read through the data. Now we start at two because we want to skip the header and then we go down to all the rows that there are. Now each time that we come to a row, what we want to do is we want to add it to the collection. So we do range cells and it's going to be I, which is always the current row. One is going to be the first name value. And so what we do here, now this is the, the critical part, is we have a customer and the customer is the object CLS new. Now each line or each row that we come to, we set the customer equal to a new customer object. So we're creating a new object in memory each time we hit that row. And then what we do is we do customer and we do first name, for example, equals this one. And we basically just copy these lines down. And this one is the last name. And this one is the country. And then what we do is we simply add it to our collection. So we're adding the customer to our collection, which is called customers. And then at the end, it will be full. Now this, of course, should be two, and this should be three. So let's run this code. And we get our range, we step in. Now let's do all of VH. So let's have a look here at our watch window, delete these existing items, and let's put in our collection first. So the collection says object with block not set. 
And that's even saying that, even though we've declared it as a new collection. Now the reason for this is that when we use dim as new, it remains on set until the first time we actually use the collection. So this is just something that VBA does to be efficient and we don't have to worry about it so much. Now, the set customer sets it straight away. So you can see that this customer is just an empty item, but it is a new item. So we step past the first one. You'll see that it put Laura in. The next one put in Stanley as the surname, and then it put in Germany as the country. And we add this to our customers. Now watch this as we add. You can see customers now has stopped with that error about not having been set. And you can see it has one item, which is Laura, Germany, Laura Stanley. So we go up to the next one, and now we're creating another one in memory. So customer was previously pointing to the first one. It's now going to point to another one. We don't need to worry about that it pointed to the first one because we, we've already placed this in our collection. So we step down through it, and again, this time first name is Alan, and last name is Oliver, and it sets the country to be Luxembourg. And then we add it to our collection. So now you can see we've got two items in our collection and so on. We set it again, we go down, and now we've got a third item in our collection. And this is why, so for every item that we want, so for every object, which is in this case, the CLS customer class module, every time we want an object, we use new and it creates a new object in memory. Now, if we didn't do this, every time we would just be overriding whatever's in the item. And this is a mistake a lot of people make. So let's have a look at what that would mean because it's very interesting to see. So we run the code again. We get down, we have the customer first name. You see that it says variable block not set. So what we will do is we'll put in a new here. So we've got one customer and one customer only. We're only doing new once. Now we go down here, we say customer first name. Let's have a look. It's Laura, Stanley and Germany. So the same as before and we add this to our collection. So the same as before, but when we come to the next one, it's the same customer item. So in other words, it's the same object in memory because we've only ever created one object. And we go down, we set the values again, and you can see the values are changing in the collection because it's the same object that both are pointing to. Now, when we do the next one, the next country, you can see that Germany is going to change for both of them. And it changes to Luxembourg for both of them because they're both pointing at the same one. So the key thing here is that every time you use a new object, you use the keyword set. And the first time you don't need new because you're not setting it at this point. So what happens when we assign from one object to another? So in this code, what we have is we have customer one. Let's step through the code and we can see exactly what's happening. So we say customer one, we set the first name and then we set the surname. So we've got Jane Murphy, as you can see. Now the second customer is set to nothing. We haven't assigned it to anything yet. And now we assign it to customer one. So you can see they have the same values. But what actually happened here is that we didn't create a copy. We're just both pointing at the same object. And we can easily prove this. All we've got to do is change the first name in either of them. So for example, we'll change the first name in customer one and we'll change the first name in customer two. So we can just go up here and let's change the first one to Bob and the second one will change to Tim. So we'll put a breakpoint in the code and we'll run the code again to here. So at this point in time, they're both the same. We've assigned one to the other. And now we change the first name of two to Bob. You can see that it changed in both of them. And that, as I said, is because they're both pointing to the same object. Now, if we change Tim or change the first customer name to Tim, you can see that it changes in both. And this is because, again, it's the same object. So one way we can look at this is just like a variable. So if we have a simple variable, um, let's just say use var and let's just have two variables. We'll call it x as long. So two simple long integer variables. If we say x equals six and then we say y equals x, they both have the same 
value in them. So what VBA is doing is copying the 6 from X and puts it in Y. Now if we change the value in X, it won't change the value in Y because they just hold values. So it's kind of similar to what's happening with customer. Both of customer 1 and customer 2, they're holding addresses. So when we say set customer 2 equals customer 1, VBA will copy the address from here and places it in customer 2. Now there's no way with these objects of copying them without manually doing it. So the way we do it is we declare customer2 as new and then we assign the value. So we have to assign each of the values. So we normally create a sub to do this. So we say customer2 first name equals customer1 first name. And then we don't need the set here. So if we run this code again, you'll see that they're both equal to Jane, but the last name is different in Murphy because we've only set the first name. So we didn't, we created a second one using new. We've used new twice, so the, that's the clue, and we have two objects. So now when we change Bob in customer two, it changes in customer two, but not in customer one because they're both pointing at different objects. So you can see the only way that we can copy the item is by going through each object and then copying the different parts that we want to copy. So it's very important when you're using VBA and using objects that you understand this. So in this video, we looked at VBA objects in memory. Now the first thing we looked at was that new creates a new object in memory, but the object variables contain the address, they don't contain the object. Now we don't need to worry about this in most cases because VBA takes care of it for us. When you set a new together on the same line, it gives us flexibility because we can create as many objects as we like. And setting one object to another copies the address only, it doesn't copy the object. So this is very important to keep in mind, especially if you're using collections and dictionaries. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the contents, then please click on the like button. Click on the subscribe button to get notified about my upcoming weekly videos. And if you've got any comments, questions, ideas, then please add them to the comments section below. So I also have a free VBA Vitals Cheat Sheet. You can get that from the link in the description. So see you on the next video.